Hey guys, welcome to this video and my channel. My name is Heather. I'm the owner and creator here at Wicked Whiskey Designs. And today we are working on, look at that, rainbow tree line, heck yes. So this cup is easy to do. It looks like it's complicated just because it has tons of layers, tons of chunky glitter, but I promise you this is a really easy cup to make. You just have to kind of know the steps to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you everything you need to make this cup. I'm gonna link down below everything I use to make this cup. So if you wanna make this exact design, you have access to all of those products. And don't forget to like and subscribe. My little channel here took a break for a little while, but I am back and I have a ton of content on its way. So you definitely wanna get notified of when those videos drop. Also, don't forget to hang out to the end. The end is my tips and tricks section. It's a little more casual, a little more chill, um, but it is where I share with you all of the tips and tricks that I learned along the way so that you can make this cup as easy and as less complicated and without the headaches as possible. So definitely check out that section. And other than that, that pretty much wraps up this intro. I'm gonna go ahead and get started, show you everything you need to make this cup. Let's go have some fun. Okay, kids, so we are gonna go ahead and do the tree line cup. I love this cup. This is just a pretty cup. It just is. I had um, a friend of mine on social media ask if I would do a tutorial and um, happy to do it. Cause like I said, there's so many different things you can do with this style and this, um, this design. My original cup that I sell in the store um, is not these colors that I'm using right now, but I wanted to do something different because um, I wanna try something different. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with spray paint. Now, you do not need to go out and buy $1,800 worth of spray paint to do this cup. I'm gonna add a lot of um, colors to the base. It helps, you know, the glitter. It helps fill in those blanks more. But if you don't have all these spray paints, you can either one, you know, have just a, a base color. Um, like we're gonna be doing, what am I doing? Blue, purple, orange, yellow, green. You can do just a, a white base and, and leave it at that for your glitter options, you know, for where you're doing your glitter. Um, you're fine with that. I've done that. That's not a big deal. If you do have the colors, great. If you have colors similar to what I'm using, great. I mean, like I said, don't go out and spend a billion dollars on spray paint if you don't have to. So that's all that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what are we doing? We are going to do top, bottom thingy um we're going to our top is going to be like a navy blue okay um going into i'm going to use like a neon -y purple but you can use just like you know if you just great or any purple that's fine um and then it's going to go into an orange a yellow a green we are not spray painting this bottom okay we're not there yet so you're gonna bring your spray paint, let's say you wanna overshoot. So if I'm gonna start my tree line somewhere in this realm, okay, tree, 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 um, I want to bring my green down. Um, how, will you, how do we do this cup? Spray paint, glitter, okay, epoxy. I add a black vinyl tree line decal starting right about here okay so tree it runs on epoxy spray paint the bottom and then um and then more epoxy we all know the beauty of black black is the cadillac of all things good and uh, black hides everything so if you grab on the right black you're not going to have to like bring your vinyl all the way down we're not doing that all right so the spray paint is going to come in and um and hide anything extra that being said, you don't want to be like, you don't want to stop your green here, okay? Put your tree line here, and then you're going to see here where there's no glitter or no spray paint. I've done that, so we won't want, we won't do that. Um, so like I said, we're going to bring our paint down to right about here-ish. Um, I would rather have the green come down too far than not far enough. So, and like I said, if you don't have these colors, like I have a hundred billion spray paint colors here okay that have been amassed over years uh, you don't need all that you can do this on a white base i've done that okay it's it's fine it's not a big deal um i use the spray paint because i like the extra help 
so that if, um, you know, I don't need to worry about filling in, in spaces. Like I'm using dark colors. So I don't have to be like, oh, there's a little white spot. I need more glitter. Oh, I need to do an extra run, blah, blah, blah. So, but you definitely can do that. And if you're doing that, that's fine. Do um, white all the way pretty much down. You know what I mean? You're going to cover it all anyway. Um, but if you're not, you don't need my exact spray paint colors if you have something comparable. So like for the purple I am using, because I use this purple for everything. Um, it's like a neon purple through Montana. If you don't have that, it's no big deal. Grab, if you have grape, it's fine. It's all getting covered with glitter. It's all getting covered with glitter. This is literally just to kind of fill in the spaces um, behind the glitter. So, like, don't stress too hard on that, all right? It's glitter. It's all right. All right, let's talk about the fun stuff. Let's talk about colors. What we have here first, we've got um, Five Star Fleet XL from It's Pretty Personal. It is a very dark um, navy blue glitter. It's gorgeous. I want this color to be my transition color, but as you can see, I have that much. So we are going to, on the first layer of colors, we're gonna go ahead and add this as our transition color, which is um, Hail Navy. It's a matte, dark blue, chunky glitter. It's gorgeous. And then that, on the second run of epoxy, or excuse me, our second run of glitter, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna transition with this. This is Zephyr of, from PDB. This is such a freaking pretty glitter. I love that one. Um, next is going to be, Nurple XL, also from It's Pretty Purple. It is um, a chunky neon purple, also from It's Pretty Personal. Vibes Fire 2.0. This is a color shift, kind of goes between a little bit of red, a little bit of orange. It's gorgeous when it's laid down. Now, we're going to run into the same exact situation, sort of, as we did with these. I want a base color um, on the first coat, and then on the second run, um, I'm going to sprinkle the lighter color and, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, I want, <laughs> I want a lime green, but two clicks up from lime green in chunky, please. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you don't always have that. I have over 700 glitter colors and even I don't have every color that I need sometimes. So, um, this is, what is this? Frosted pineapple, um, from Posh. This is absolutely gorgeous. I, I use this a lot. This is absolutely pr so pretty. And then I also have, it's pretty personal, hard lemonade, tart line XL. So, you know, we're going to put this down and then we're going to kind of put this on top of it or sprinkle that on top of it because I want it bright, but maybe not neon bright, but not as dark as that, but not as light as that. Got it? Get it? Got it? Good. Same thing with this. This is, where's my head? This is Seaweed by na, 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 Lily's Glitter Shop. Um, again, this is one of those things where I want it lighter than that, but darker than that, but lighter than that. So we're going to put this as a base, and then we're going to come, this is also from the Tarte line. This is Limelight XL from It's Pretty Personal, and we're going to do a sprinkling of that on top. Um, so that's the lineup. Um, I think this is going to work really well. We'll kind of take a look at that, but yeah, I think that's going to be freaking beautiful. So those are our colors. Start your cup by applying a super micro thin layer of epoxy with a gloved hand and don't forget to blow out your micro bubbles before moving on to adding the glitter. Okay. So let's have some fun. Um, what we're going to start with, we're going to start top to bottom. We're going to do um, a base coat of glitter. We are going to let this spin out. Once this is cured, we're gonna add a top coat of glitter, excuse me, a top coat of epoxy, and then we're going to sprinkle on more glitter. Um, we're not gonna go heavy on the second coat of glitter, unless we really have to, like things get real janky, but um, it's just gonna be more of like a, a blending um, layer. So we're going to go ahead and start laying down our first layer of glitter. I start top to bottom. It's just how I do this. And I'm going to start 
This is a five star fleet. Go real heavy on that edge. Just because I can't tell you how many times I've done this and kind of didn't go as much and then I had to come back and fix it. Um, I am just going to go down about that far. I'm not overly worried that, about this being a perfect ombre by any means. That's what the second layer is for. Next, I'm going to go ahead and use the, um, the Hail Navy. Same. I know we're down in the purple. I'm not really worried about that. I'm not going to do um, much. I am going to try to kind of blend that um, Hail Navy up into the, the five star. But like I said, we're not trying to go for a perfect ombre at this point. This is just to get the glitter on the cup. Next. Ooh, a shiny new bottle. Next. Nurple, which is probably my favorite, um, like, neon electric purple in the whole world. So, kind of going up, kind of going down. Color above, cover, color below. Again, um, this is not something that we're trying to be like, oh, it's perfect. No, this is going to look like trash until the next layer. I'm running out of space to put this stuff. What's next? Orange. I did flip out the orange. Where's my thing? I did flip it out from um, Fire 2.0 to Cider Orange. It takes the red out. This doesn't have the red that Fire does. And it's kind of like a nice little medium orange. Medium burnt orange, you'll say. And I think it's going to be really pretty on here. If I feel like this is getting to be too, like this orange is going to be too dark, then I may pull the same card as I'm doing with the yellow and the green and add a, um, a lighter orange on top. What kind of C? Like, sometimes, you know how it goes. You pull a thousand colors and then you kind of have to adjust from there. So, next, the yellow. Yeah, I can already tell I want brighter yellow than that. So we will definitely be using um, tart on top of that. Now, like like I think I said before, maybe, you know, we're gonna start our tree line somewhere in this area, okay? And we can judge where we're gonna put that tree decal, where we're gonna start it based on where the, you know, how our glitter goes. Um, so, you know, just be mindful. You want your green to come down far enough to where you don't have to make an executive decision based on where your glitter is overshoot your green that way you don't have to worry about it hi there thank you yeah. and same as the yellow I'm definitely going to want something brighter than that. So, this is a good base. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, does it look bad? Yeah, it does. It's okay. I'm not worried about that. Because the next um, layer of glitter is going to be more of um, a smoothing out. And when it comes to... You know, two or three glitters, usually I only need two coats. If I'm doing this many glitters, chances are I'm going to need three coats of glitter. Um, so all of these epoxy layers that are going to be done in between are going to be micro. They're going to be as thin as possible, only there just to, you know, get the glitter to, to stick on. Um, I, I definitely want this brighter. I definitely want this brighter. So anyway, we're going to let that spin. Um, once that's cured, like I said, we're going to do another coat of epoxy on there. And then while that epoxy is still um, still wet, we're going to go ahead and sprinkle on our next layer of glitter. So for right now, we're going to let this roll and let it be. Okay, kids. So I apologize. My garage door is down right now because Florida is just getting absolutely like belligerent weather right now. Um, so I apologize that the lighting is different and a little bit off, but we're going to roll with it anyway. Um, more epoxy. 
just so you know, like in these videos, when I have like this gallon cup of um, epoxy, obviously I'm not making all of this to go on just this one cup. Um, I've got 40 cup spinners and at any given moment I have, you know, tons of other cups rolling. So, um, you know, when, when I'm doing these things, I don't want you to think like, wow, that's a whole hell of a lot of epoxy to put on one cup. Just a little disclaimer on that one. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a very thin coat of epoxy on this. Now I do, you will see when it comes to like layers like this layered, um, you know, ombres and, and colored cups like this, you very rarely will ever see me start like epoxying like this like right off. I normally epoxy side to side because I want to keep that blue where it is. I want to keep the purple. I want the yellow where it stays. I don't want to start doing this and have blue into the dark and dark light into the dark and da 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 da. I don't want that. All right. That, that irritates me when I end up doing that to myself. So I will be epoxying this way. A little bit of blending is one thing, but I don't want dark, you know, dark blue down in my yellow. So if you ever wonder why I'm doing it that way, that's why I'm doing it that way. So we're going to add now when I say that, when I pop, put, um, when I add the epoxy, I am going so light. I am like absolutely feather touching this right now. I'm just trying to get the epoxy on the cup. All right. And then, um, like I said, it's, it's just going side to side. It doesn't always work. Like, honestly, there's times, obviously, you know, there's going to be one or two pieces of glitter. They're just going to end up where they where they're not supposed to go and you just kind of pick those off but for the most part this kind of cuts down on the madness a bit she says optimistically like there's a blue it's not supposed to be there and i'll oftentimes like check my my glove too um you know now we're getting down into this area here into the light yeah you're gonna have you know you're gonna have glitter be where it's not supposed to be um you just kind of you know use your finger and, and tip that out but it's just, you know, I don't want huge amounts of glitter going everywhere. I want this to kind of be as um, as pure as it can. So we're just going to go ahead very light. Um, I do not care about blue in the purple. I don't care about purple in the orange. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not really so much worried about that. That's all going to blend out in its own special way. I'm more worried about, uh, like, dark blue in yellow. I want the yellow to kind of be as, that's just me being nitpicky. Yeah, that kind of looks good. Okay, so epoxy is on there. We're going to let that spin for just a minute. Ah, no, you don't. No, you don't. Keep in mind, too, you're also going to hit this bottom with, with epoxy as well um, because you want to, um, you know, even though you don't have glitter down here, you want you don't want it to be like, epoxy, nothing. So, you know, you want to go ahead and, and try to make that as even as possible. Um, all right, let's go ahead and let that roll for a minute. Any extra up here? Because my spinners are not always even or level. Okay, so that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm going to now start um, adding in the next layer of epoxy. I mean, glitter. Let there be light. All right, so we can see things a little bit better. Um, next. Oh, wait, no, not next yet. All right, and then I'm going to take just a little bit of that pink and try to move down just a little bit into the orange. You are doing just micro bursts of color right now. You're doing an ombre. You're trying to do an ombre. So you're not covering anything major. You're not going real heavy. And that's why I said chances are with this many colors, we are going to have to do um, another run of glitter on top of this one. Now, all right, so wish me luck. We're breaking out the neon orange. I think that orange that's on there right now is just a little too aggressive in the pumpkin vibe so we are going just a little bit up and a little bit down cha 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 i'm not covering i'm not trying to full coverage anything okay i am trying to get rid of lines but like i said we'll just kind of play with that there is that Alright, let's get a little yellow in there. Uh, 
and I am just releasing just like the smallest amount of glitter and I'm just kind of just shotgunning it all over the place for lack of a better term ah, my thing cut out I have no idea where we cut out all right I'll find that out later it's a good thing we're doing a third run of glitter on here so if you missed all of the other colors we are doing just a fine little scattering of that neon green over that darker green we are doing it by hand versus breaking it out of the the shaker and we are literally just putting little bursts of color we are not trying for full coverage by any means we're not trying to cover up what's already on there we're just adding to it in a, its own little layer and looking at this oops sorry I didn't mean to shake y'all um, um, I'm probably going to do one more layer of glitter on top of this. Right now we're going to let this run and we'll make that decision when it's all um, when it's all done with this. Once this layer of epoxy is cured, go ahead and add another layer of epoxy on top of the glitter to seal that glitter in. Since it's chunky glitter, you may need a second coat of epoxy, but don't forget to blow out your micro bubbles in between each. Okay, one thing I want to say real quick. See right there, that little boinky. Those little really big, strong glitter pops where um, they're just being belligerent. You can kind of see them kind of randomly around the cup. It's the downfall of chunky glitter. It's okay. But see that little thing? Okay, I love myself enough not to try to sand that by hand. So, like, don't be a hero. If you have one of these handy-dandy little hand sanders, use it. Okay, don't try to be a hero and sand that thing by hand. Um, that took me surprisingly many years to figure out. Um, you know, they're not expensive. I, you can pick one up at Walmart, I think, for like under 20 bucks. Um, all you're doing literally is just, you know, sanding, obviously, rough edges on cups. It doesn't need to be some kind of a, you're not building a house. You know what I mean? You're not, you're not sanding off your, your pool deck or whatever. So, like, you don't have to buy something, like, really expensive and big named and all that kind of stuff like that. Um, you know, like I said, do yourself a favor. Grab one of those little hand sanders because they really are a lifesaver and I use mine on a daily basis. Um, lids, I mean, rims. You know, um, one thing we don't really talk enough about is, you know, going through before the final run of epoxy, taking, in this case, the hand sander, um, you know, rimming out the top of this, um, you know, the tops of the cups so that the, you have a very thin little ribbon of stainless steel, you know, showing so that the epoxy has a nice solid place to land on the final run of epoxy. Um, like I said, anything, any of these little bumps in that I use my hand sander for, so, Consider this the, the PSA for the day. If you have the availability to get one or one hanging out in your garage, get it and, um, and start using it if you're not already. So, all right, we're going to move on to the next step. I'm going to go ahead and sand these, um, these horribly ginormous glitter bumps down. And we are going to go ahead and move on to uh, the decaling. Next, you're going to go ahead and add your tree line. Once you cut your tree line out of your black vinyl, use a craft knife and basically score the vinyl and basically cut your tree line into four um, sections. I find with the trees being very wispy and somewhat unpredictable, trying to wrap the entire thing around the cup just never seems to work right for me. So I find it easier to cut it into four sections and piece it on the cup that way. Okay, now you can do one of two things at this point. You can cut an extra little tree and pop that little tree right in there. Um, or you just grab your like handy dandy little black paint pen and just kind of fill it in. Like there's really, nobody's gonna notice a little extra tree in there. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not really worried about that. Okay. Once your tree line is on there, go ahead and start adding some of those really sparkly stars at the top in a completely random pattern. When you're done with that, go ahead and spray the bottom of your cup with Rust-Oleum Gloss Black Spray Paint and send it for its final coat of epoxy. Hey guys! 
What is up? Okay, so let's take a moment to look at all of that. Okay, this, hopefully you saw in the video, this is an easy cup to make. It looks like it's really complicated. It's really not. It just has a ton of layers and we all know that, you know, that's just how we do things here. So anyway, um, definitely, let's go through a couple of things. Number one, definitely be using your micro layers of epoxy. You do not need 700 pounds of epoxy because you will end up with a 7,000 pound cup, okay? So when in between all of these layers, especially with adding the glitter, you are just literally doing the smallest amount of, of um, epoxy as possible. The glitter choices. I went with these because uh, they're colors I wanted to try. I have this cup on my site, both of my sites, um, in like pinks and purples. And I just kind of want to try something using um, different colors. Feel free to do the same. If you don't like these colors, that's fine. Run with what you like. You know what I mean? Um, I always try to say like, you know, what I'm doing on these on this channel in these cups, make them your own. Definitely run with the colors that make you happy. You will see in this video, the first layer of glitter as the first layer always seems to look like absolute trash. That's okay. It's supposed to. You are going to layer all of the glitter, you know, so don't think that on that very first layer, you've got to go real strong, real heavy. It's all got to cover that you can't see the base. No, you are going to go light. Because honestly, your next layer is going to come in and fill in the blanks. And normally when I do this cup, I do two layers of glitter. Um, with all of the different colors used on this cup, I kind of figured we were going to have to go for three. And we definitely did. So, um, you know, again, you're not trying to do full coverage with your glitter. Because then it's just going to be full coverage over full coverage over full coverage. And then you're not going to get the dimension that you get by doing, you know, three quarter coverage, three quarter coverage. And that way, you know, you're seeing the different layers of glitter and that's kind of what makes this cup really special. So um, definitely go light, definitely take your time. You know, I will say that, you know, you want to take your time adding the glitter only because, um, you know, like I said, you're not trying to do full coverage. You're not trying to do the perfect ombre right off the bat. You are just trying to layer your colors. And if you're going through on your second run and you're like, I don't really like how I, I need more pink up here or I need more of this over here, run with it. Just go for it. Um, have fun with it and just, you know, just jump right in. That's all you can do with cups like this. Um, as far as the trees go, let's talk about spray painting trees. You will see, because I'm swanky like this, I grabbed my little paint pen and I drew a tree. Where is my tree? I did not progress to be a tr great tree drawer. -er -er. My little tree is right. Where'd it go? Where's my tree? There. There's my tree. Look at that. Awesome. Don't make this any more complicated than it needs to be, I guess, is where I'm going with that. You know, these cups are supposed to be fun. Obviously, if you're doing them for customers, you want them the best that you can possibly make them, of course. But I think sometimes we forget that sometimes the easiest way to fix a problem is just that, the easiest way. You can always, like when I normally cut the tree lines out, you know, you've got the, you know, your entire sheet of, of vinyl. The tree line itself runs on one side. Okay, so unless you're doing a decal and you're going to use that black on the other side of that, you know, you're going to use the other half of your vinyl sheet to do a decal. You know, normally I will run two tree lines and that way I know that if I need an extra little piece, I've already got it. Like I have like pages of extra just like in a pile somewhere. But, um, and like I said too, like, like the weirdest, you know, sizes, the smallest sizes are the ones that seem to take the most. Uh, wine glasses, I always have to go to a second tree line to finish it out. Like, I don't even understand why that's even a thing, but whatever. Um, okay, and also case in point, if you're doing a tree line on a wine glass, you are literally just going to kind of shrink your your trees down a bit because your trees are pretty hardy, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to have a whole wine glass of trees. So just, I don't have to tell you guys that, you know that, size it appropriately. Uh, but yeah, like, okay, did I want to go and cut? Because I didn't. Do I want to go cut an extra tree? Not really. Do I need to? Not really. Um, if you don't feel like you're nearly as great at drawing trees as me, feel free to do that. But honestly, like I said, grab your paint, Ben, you're done. Um, let's talk about paint. Okay. 
Now, there are tumbler makers out there that are way better than me that will sit there and run their vinyl all the way to the base, wrap it all around. It's perfect. They move on with life. The end. I'm not that person. I am craptastic when it comes to wrapping entire things around cups. Um, I will make them crooked. I will get a ripple in it. I will jack it up every way you can possibly think of it. So for me to do that, like it's literally like, it's an event. And for me to do it correctly, it's a celebration. So I don't try to complicate my life any more than I need to because I understand my limitations and wrapping full sheets of vinyl around a cup usually is one of them. So the way I do this, obviously, I do the tree line, I do a, a black paint base. Now, can you see it? Nope. Can't see any problems? Nope. Why? Because Rust-Oleum Gloss Black is the bomb diggity of all black spray paints. I have made this cup and then painted that base by hand using um, like craft paint. Eh, that didn't work. You can see the differential in the colors. I have, uh, my husband swears by flat spray paint because here in Florida, it dries faster. You know, he hates using gloss. So we always have like black flat spray paint. I've tried it with that. Eh, wrong. It's going to show the difference. So if you are looking to make this cup following my way of doing it with the decal and the and the black paint base, go grab yourself for $5.98 at Walmart, Rust-Oleum Gloss Black Spray Paint. And you are not going to see any kind of differential between your vinyl and your spray paint. The end. Amen. Now, if you are like me and occasionally get distracted and you're not paying attention and you do this, and you are on your final coat of epoxy because you know you always see it after you put the epoxy on and you're like holy crap i spray painted the bottom everything was great but i didn't take the spray paint all the way down to the decal line or all the way up i want to say it and now there's a line and oh my blah, 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 blah. no okay again grab your little black um paint pen and just you know done all right Black is the Cadillac and the, the great, you know, the great thing of all things when it comes under epoxy because it literally hides anything. So would I suggest taking your paint pen and like paint penning in the entire bottom? No, I would not suggest that. Have I done that? I feel like maybe I have on something. Don't do that on this one though. But if you do have, because I've done that, I have, where you spray paint everything. I have made messes of this. I have spray painted everything. It's summertime. Everything runs. Um, the paint is running all the way down here. And because I do not pay attention sometimes because I'm busy and I'm running around, I will epoxy it and then be like, what the F is that? Oh, that is a paint drip all the way past the tree. Dirty word. Um, if that happens to you, okay, number one, if you haven't done the epoxy yet, grab some acetone, or, 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 take that right off. You're good to go. If you are like me and you just epoxy it and like whatever, um, you can do one of two things. Number one, you can grab your paint pen and make it a tree. I've done that. Or um, you wait for your epoxy to be cured. And I mean fully cured. I don't mean wait, you know, till tonight where you can pick it up and play it with it and move it all around. No, you wait till that thing is fully cured. Wait your two days. All right. And then grab your sander, um, your electric sander and try to sand down to where you can get that off and, and epoxy. Like I've done that too. So just a little, little 411 on that. So again, I also hope that you guys, if you do not have a, an electric hand sander, oh my word, that is probably the best $20 I've ever spent. Because once upon a time, er, 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 with my little sanding block and you know, that gets old fast. Um, that little hand sander, I think I got it off Amazon. I will look. Um, you can definitely get them on Walmart for like 20 bucks. You're not trying to build a deck. You don't need like the most expensive hand sander there is. Just go grab that. Um, mine, I use mine pretty much every day. Pretty much every day. Now I still have a sanding block. I still use a sanding block for various things. But when it comes to big belligerent chunks, oh, chunky glitter sticking straight up, yeah, I'm not trying to play that game. So definitely, um, if you don't have one, think about getting one. Like I said, they're not expensive. You don't need a fancy one. You literally will just use it to and 
and move on with life. It's a, it's a game changer. That was, like I said, probably the next to cups lined so that I don't have to measure epoxy and my actual epoxy, you know, little juju thing that mixes the epoxy for me. Hand sander probably comes in third as far as favorite little thing that I've, I bought for myself because <sighs> tumblers are hard some days. Anyway, so like I said, definitely, you know, think about that. It definitely makes things like this cup where you have, you know, a ton of chunky glitter and something's gonna boink up eventually, makes things a little bit easier. So there's that. So we've talked about glitter. We've talked about hand sanders. We've talked about the trees. We've talked about the paint. I think that's pretty much it. You obviously can put a decal on here. You know, I um, most of my work is custom orders from, um, from customers. And so it's very rare that like I would do a cup like this and not put a decal on. Usually some, they want their name. They want a, you know, off to the woods saying or whatever. I, um, you'll see on a lot of my videos on this channel, I don't put a lot of decals. Sometimes I will. I will probably do an actual video on, you know, how to lay down decals and, and the whatnot. But um, unless I feel like it really needs one, chances are I'm not going to put a decal. But you definitely could, um, you know, right like up in here. It would be beautiful. So, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I can't think of anything else really to talk about other than, oh, one thing I love to do, and you know that I do this. Um, the last coat of epoxy, I add a little bit of an additive, a sparkle additive, so that this whole thing just sparkles, sparkles, sparkles. Um, and it really, honestly, it brings the black to life. We all know that black, obviously, you know, everything goes flat on the black under epoxy. And so it just kind of makes it a little bit special not to wear it's just plain black. If you do want just the plain black and there's nothing wrong with that, just leave the sparkle additive out of the mix or add it before you add the trees, you know, for a little extra something on the you know, on the actual glitter because you can never sparkle too much. We all know that. Um, that's pretty much it. You know, if you are inspired by any of these and you, you know, you sit there and, and you make a tree line, tag me. Please tag me. I love seeing what you guys do. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or reach out to me. You guys have my email. I'm on social media everywhere. You can definitely always find me. And, uh, you know, I'm here to help. So I hope that's it. I think that's it. Um, yeah. So go make yourself a tree line. They're fun. Have a great week. See ya.